guys today we are doing Chi Ching number 41 so we're going to start in where we left off this Chi Ching is definitely going to feature a lot of my aunt's things that have sold recently um, so I'm excited about that I'm gonna go see her tomorrow to pay her for everything that I owe her so if I do get anything else from her I will try to make another kind of like vintage toy haul video I've just been really enjoy um you know doing those and just kind of just going back in time a little bit just looking at everything so the last thing that we uh, left off at was a dress this dress was by a company called Wilka and it was sold at Anthropology. This dress sold for $59.99. So Anthropology clothing definitely sells well and high. Um, there's a lot of different brands that Anthropology carries. I personally don't know all of them, but I do know a few. Um, so this dress, I can't remember exactly where I got it. I'm pretty sure it probably came from the thrift store. So I'd say maybe I spent about $6 on it. Next we have a racing shirt. This was a Bobby Labonte racing shirt that sold for $37.99. Eric probably picked this up at a yard sale. Racing stuff does seem to sell. Um, I don't know much about it. Eric really doesn't either, but it is something that he has more of a tendency to look at when we are you know, at yard sales and thrift stores. Me personally, I don't spend a whole lot of time looking at it just mainly because it doesn't really interest me all that much. But you know, money is money and there is money everywhere. So it is something that I probably should look into a little more. Uh, but he probably got that at a yard sale and I'd say paid like a dollar to two dollars at the most for it. Next was a Disney Parks Expedition Everest t-shirt. This sold for $27.99 and I got this at a thrift store and I think I paid about $2 for it. Okay, so this next item was something of my aunt's. This was a vintage Daisy Duke figure doll. This was just a really tiny doll. I mean, she was not large at all. Just like literally a tiny little um, figure doll. This sold for $56.99. She couldn't believe how much um, it was worth. And, you know, when I told her when we were, like, going through some of her things, um, I told her, like, how much it was probably worth. And she just couldn't believe it. Um, but definitely, like, old Dukes of Hazard stuff um, does seem to sell really well. This figure in particular went... Um, it, as an international sale, it did go through eBay's uh, global shipping program. Um, I do definitely notice, and I will like point it out each time throughout this video, that vintage toys, a lot of them go overseas. So if you're selling vintage toys or anything for that matter, and you do not offer GSP, I would definitely highly recommend it um, just because you're opening up all of those other potential buyers and making you know the most that you can on your item um I did record a video of <laughs> I said I was going to record a video of the top five mistakes eBay resellers make and um I will go I I did I just didn't upload the video yet um I do go over the GSP program and stuff like that so definitely if you don't offer it um consider because there were a couple instances where I did sell to someone overseas Next was a roll of vintage Harm, Har, Harmark, Hallmark decorative like deco trim. This was kind of like ribbon basically. Uh, definitely older, I'd say from like the 60s or 70s. Had a great retro look to it. That's over $12.99. It was brand new and I did get that at a yard sale I think for like probably a quarter or 50 cents. Uh, next was a pair of Men's American Eagle board shorts. <laughs> These only sold for $5.99. I had such a hard time selling these. I just wanted them out of the house. Um, so I just, you know, 
whatever, $5.99. I paid, I think I paid like 10 cents for them at a yard sale, so it's not like, you know, a huge thing, but for whatever reason, these just were not selling, and they were even a good size too. They were like a men's 2XL, and just nobody wanted them, so I'm just happy that they're out of my house. Next was a little elf figure. This was so cute. It was a little ceramic elf figure and it was signed by someone named Nancy Williams. This sold for $14.99 and I got this at a fill a bag rummage sale so pretty much paid less than a dollar for that. I was just really drawn to it. I thought it was so cute and whimsical looking. Just stuff that I really like so you know it's easy for me to pick up because I like it myself. Uh, again, this next item was a piece of clothing that nobody wanted and I just wanted out of my house. It was a pair of bullhead jeans. These again also sold for $5.99. So not much money there. Um, definitely would not repurchase that brand probably at all. Um, so yeah, those probably came from a fill -a bag rummage sale or a yard sale, so definitely no more than a dollar for those um, I spent on it. So next item, again, was one of my aunt's vintage toys. This one was for a mask, um, car, and action figure. This one was called the Thunderhawk. This sold for $100, so mask toys are definitely... Um, you know, some vintage toys I feel like are harder to find. Um, ones that weren't, I mean, they were popular, I believe, back in the day, but maybe not as popular as some, like, other toys like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, this too, this toy as well, went to a buyer overseas. So just letting you guys know when that happens so you can see like there's just you know a very high likelihood <laughs> that when you sell vintage toys um a lot of buyers i just feel like are coming from overseas because it's harder for them to find you know the older toys in their locations especially stuff that was originally from the u.s so next we have a lot of three vintage cocktail refrigerator magnets. I purchased a baggie of these at Goodwill for $3.99. These I lotted up as a set of three because they were all shaped the same. And those sold for $10.50 and they went to a subscriber and she had told me um, in a little note that she has a 70s themed kitchen that they were going to go in and I think that is so awesome. I would love to see pictures of that. Um, so I did sell um, another one of those magnets and I think that's in this stitching as well and I do have a couple others still listed. Next was a compression leg kind of system band thing. <laughs> I'm so great at describing things. This was by a company called Circade. I purchased this at Goodwill. I think I paid $3.99 for it and it sold for $22.99. I actually purchased two that day and I do have another one that is currently listed. Um, next was a vintage My Little Pony Seahorse Pony. Um, this one's name was Sea Light. It did come with its original brush. This sold for $29.99. Again, one of my aunt's items. And again, this went overseas as well. Um, let's see. Next again was one of my aunt's items. This was like a baggie full of old, um, bubblegum charms or Cracker Jack charms. They're just like those little plastic charms you would have gotten in like, um, the little vending machines where you'd stick your quarter in and then come out in a little egg. You know, they still have those around now. Uh, but these were just older ones. It was a lot of them that sold for $12.99. Next item was a vintage Mattel Hot Wheels belt buckle. Again, one of my aunt's items. This also went to a subscriber who said her husband collects um, Hot Wheels items. So that is awesome. That also sold for $12.99. 
I sold a set, well, it's just one, a vintage Canon full fitted sheet that had like a floral daisy print on. Um, I, I'm like a sucker for vintage new old stock um, sheets and linens and stuff like that. This sold for $22.99 and I'm pretty sure that came from a yard sale for $1.00. I sold a pair of leopard print clogs by a company called Sanita. I purchased these at Goodwill. I believe they were probably about $7.47 and those sold for $39.99. Those were so cute. I really liked those. Um, another pair of shoes that sold, I sold two pairs in this cha-ching. These were a pair of Clark's driving shoes. They were loafers. Those sold for $39. No, that was my clogs. $38.99. Those sold for $38.99. And those came from a yard sale. And I do believe they were $2 or $1. I can't remember. But they were in brand new condition. Absolutely gorgeous shoes. Um, not my size or I probably would have thought about keeping them. Um, I sold a vintage trinket box. This was like a footed trinket like jewelry box. It was by a company called Kalk. K-A-L-K. I had sold something by this brand before so I recognized the maker's mark on it when I found it. Um, I do believe I got this at a yard sale and paid about a dollar for it. Um, that sold for $19.99. I had that for a little while. It did take, it did take a little while to sell that. I sold a Trail Life Scout uniform shirt. This Eric actually picked up at Salvation Army. Um, I'm pretty sure he paid $8 for it. Um, Salvation Army prices can be a little, a little pricey, I've noticed. Um, it did sell for $32.99. This one actually had like a little um, removable badge type patch on the shoulder that said um, leader, I believe. Um, so that one sold. We still have another one listed that didn't have the leader um, patch. So that's probably why the leader one sold before the plain one. Next was a cloth like paper doll looking thing. It was kind of like a stuffed, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a plushie, but it was like a stuffed paper, cloth paper doll. Um, that sold for $9.99. I got this online like a really long time ago. There's a website, it still exists. It's called Listia. And basically you give your stuff away on there, but you get points for it. So when you list something, um, it doesn't sell for like actual money. It sells for points. And then you can use those points to bid on other stuff and buy, you know, something that you want as you're getting rid of stuff that you don't want type of thing. When it first started, I really enjoyed that website. I was getting rid of like all this stuff I didn't want. It really wasn't worth my time to like list on eBay because it really wasn't worth anything. And then I was using my points to buy you know, stuff on there that I wanted. And this was one of the things <laughs> that I wanted. I purchased that on there with some of my points because I thought it was so cute. Um, so I did get that on Listia. Um, next was, again, another one of my aunt's items. This was a vintage Mr. Potato Head. This sold for $53 and a penny. Um, so that's awesome. I do have more of her Mr. Potato Head items that I need to list. So hopefully they do just as well. Um, next was, again, another thing of my aunt's. This was a vintage Poochie Stamper. Just a little, um, stamper that sold for $15.38. Again, I had, think I'd said in my haul of the vintage 80s toys that Poochie is, again, another one of those, um, vintage toys that you know, was popular, but not as popular as some other things. So just harder to find type of toy. Uh, next was a Shiloh Pottery Salt Glaze Vase that sold for $15.99. Probably picked this up at um, 
either a yard sale or a thrift store. So I'd say if it was at a yard sale, I probably paid a dollar a thrift store, maybe like $2.99 for it. Um, next was a shirt. This was a cardigan by a company called Yummy Plus. It was an animal print cardigan that sold for $16.99. This came out of one of those garbage bags full of clothes that I purchased on Facebook Marketplace. Um, same with the next item also came from one of those garbage bags. This is a sublimation top by One World that sold for $14.99. I sold a vintage Maple Town Miss Deer uh, little doll figure. These look like uh, Maple Town was pretty much like what Calico Critters are today. Um, this was still new in the packaging. I picked this up at a thrift store for $1. I couldn't believe that like I found a brand new still sealed vintage toy at the thrift store. Um, this sold for $19.99 and again it went overseas. Uh, next was a top by a company called Maeve, M-A-E-V-E. -E. This is an anthropology uh, brand top. I got this at um, the thrift store. Probably paid about $2 for it and that sold for $25.99. So here's another one of those vintage um, drink magnets. This was more of a dessert. I, I had this described as a fruit parfait <laughs> fridge magnet. That sold for $9.99. These were so cute. Oh my gosh. I just absolutely loved them. Uh, next was another one of my aunt's items. This was a vintage Mountain Dew uh, metal truck by Ertl that sold for $25.99. And the last thing that I have for this cha-ching was a dandy teddy bear. This was a 2016 Christmas teddy bear that sold for $29.99. And I picked this up at Goodwill and I probably paid about $1.99 for it. So that was really exciting to list that because um, you guys know I've been trying to get a little more into plushies and stuff like that. And, um... I thought that that, you know, I didn't know how long I was going to be like holding on to that before it would sell, but it actually sold fairly quickly. So that's really awesome. So that's 30 things for this cha-ching. I'm going to end, end at number 30 and we'll start in where we left off in the next cha-ching. So this is the time I take to just kind of discuss any kind of problems that have arisen uh, recently on eBay for me. So within this cha-ching, I sold that Henry Bendel coffee mug. Um, the buyer never paid for it, so I had to relist it. It is currently relisted. So that is like the major downfall with putting things on auction. And I get a lot of questions from people asking like when I decide to do auction and when I decide to do a buy it now like fixed price listing. So for me personally, I will put things on auction that are maybe harder to find, um, that I'm not really seeing any currently listed um, and I'm just not quite sure what to price it at because I don't really know exactly what it's worth. That's pretty much what I save auctions for. Um, more or less like, you know, things that I think might go up in price because they're a little more desirable and maybe um, people will have a little bit of a bidding war, you know, if they really, really want it type of thing. So like, say you have just, um, you know, a shirt that's not vintage, it's just like a old navy shirt, basically. Like, I wouldn't put that up on auction because the chances of more than one person really, like, bidding on it together is probably slim to none. But obviously, if you have something like a more harder to find uh, vintage toy or something like that, then that's when I would put stuff up on auction. So, the person didn't pay for the Henry Bendel mug. I was telling Eric, like, <clears throat> sometimes I get um, 
you know, I just, I get curious and I looked up the person's address and it was actually an address to a furniture store, which I mean, I guess it could have been someone who, you know, works there or owns it or what have you. But my first thought going through it was that someone just bid on it in you know with the intent of not paying and he said that like that could very well you know potentially happen when you do things like this and you have people watching your your stuff and you know if it's someone who doesn't like you or something like that then they could easily do something like that just to be problematic or a pain in the butt for you kind of thing so who knows it might have just been someone who bid and then didn't have like the the guts to like you know say like hey I'm sorry I can't I can't afford to pay pay this and da 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 and then I could have just relisted it right then but instead I had to wait until eBay opened the unpaid item case and then wait even longer until the case could be closed and then relist it so it is a lot of t it's very 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 time consuming when someone doesn't pay for something um, it really is you know it hits you hard because it's like I could have gotten a hundred dollars for that mug potentially and instead I have to wait weeks later to even relist it just you know because the case was opened so it is very much a pain in the butt um, and that's why I don't really I mean, I like doing auctions, but they can be they can be a pain when people do not pay for their items. So that's just something to think about, you know, when you are doing auctions that it happens and, you know, it's a thing where people will just jack up a price and then not pay for it. So the mug was not paid for in this cha-ching and then also I know I mentioned in my last cha-ching that clothes were selling a lot. I definitely feel like this one I had a lot of clothes that went as well. So, you know, people might be looking for clothes right now. The stimulus checks are dropping. So, um, I'm hoping that means more sales. Like, people will have, like, some extra money to just, like, buy some stuff they've been wanting to on eBay. So, um, I'm hoping for some some good sales there because of that um and then the only other thing I can think of that I wanted to discuss so I did receive um I think it was a negative feedback um I remember <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember back this far but um there was a cha-ching where I discussed someone wanting to send back a shirt um, they wanted to return a shirt that didn't fit them. Um, and I had the measurements clearly stated in my auction description. So, you know, there was nothing there that wasn't there that they could have, you know, measured and figured out, you know, if it would fit. So I did not accept the return on that shirt because I just felt like there, you know, was no real reason that I needed to. It was almost like... Maybe it didn't fit them or maybe they just were having buyer's remorse, whatever. Like they wanted to, um, they wanted to uh, return it and I denied the return. So they left me a negative feedback for it. Um, so I, I got, if you, if this ever happens to you, if you ever get a negative feedback or a neutral feedback or a feedback you just feel like isn't, um, you know, right, and you need help with it. If you go onto Facebook, um, there is a page called eBay for Business. Message them. Um, they'll just ask you for your name, your email, and um, that kind of thing. And then you tell them the reasoning behind the feedback and stuff like that. And, you know, every time I've done that so far, they've removed it. So, um, it's something that, like, before when I would get negatives and neutrals, I just kind of shrug it off, like, whatever, you know what I mean? It's no big deal. But it gets, it gets under your skin sometimes when you feel like the feedback wasn't necessarily, um, you know, needed to be, be a negative. Like, 
I could have understood maybe a neutral or something like that just because um, but a negative I thought was a little a little too much there so I did uh, message them and they did remove it for me um, I feel like there was another one as well that they removed recently um, but I can't remember I can't remember now what it was so I apologize for that um, maybe it'll come to me in my next chiching video but I'm just letting you guys know like if you ever have issues like that to get in touch with eBay for business and they will um, you know fix the problem for you which is nice because you know when you have problems with eBay it's hard to really get a hold of someone through like their actual website so it's just nice that you're you're quickly able to resolve issues within eBay off of that Facebook page um, a lot quicker than what you could do on eBay's actual page. Um, but that is everything for this cha-ching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know what you thought down in the comments. Let me know what is selling for you here lately. Um, and yeah, if you do offer GSP or don't offer GSP, um, let me know down in the comments if you do or if you don't or if you're going to to start i definitely feel like um it's just an open door for more potential sales so i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you next time